Let's review some RGB, CMYK, and spot color basics. So RGB is the color that we use for screens and it's an additive color. And that means that our primaries, red, green, and blue, are mixed together to form every single color. Red and green make yellow, red and blue make magenta, and green and blue make cyan. Mixing those primary and secondary colors together gives us our whole huge, amazing RGB spectrum. When we add all these colors together, every color, we get pure white light, or you could also say that light contains every color, kind of like the cover of Dark Side of the Moon. RGB was created for television and projection and today we use it in everything. We use it in all of our smartphones, in all of our monitors, cameras, tablets, watches, what have you. Most of the screens that we use today use LCD technology and that means that light passes through liquid crystal and it produces those RGB waves that go directly into your eyeballs. This spectrum, uh, RGB, is a huge, immense spectrum and has uh, unbelievable luminosity and possibilities. CMYK is for print and it stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key or black. And it is a subtractive color space, which, what does that even mean? Well, if we review what happens with RGB, we remember that light passes through liquid crystal and produces um, those rays that go right into our eyes. So if we wanted to show something that was red, uh, we literally project that red wave right out from the screen and it goes directly into your eyeball and then your brain is like, oh, it's red. CMYK completely different. So say that you have a red object. What happens is that the light will hit the object and the molecular structure of that object that is red actually will subtract the green and the blue rays from pure white light. So what's refracted or what's reflected into our eyes is only the red wave. I guess it's almost like red is anything but red in a weird way. Anyway, so white uh, is a substrate that will reflect everything. It reflects all colors back into your eye. And of course, black will absorb everything and reflect nothing. And when we think of this in printing, we think of the paper as being pure white. And every time we layer cyan, magenta, yellow, or black, we're subtracting more of those color waves from the white paper. And the result is that we see the right colors in the right places. It's pretty incredible that those four translucent inks can give us so much printed material. It's important to note that <clears throat> however cool it is, um, the CMYK color space is much, much smaller than the color space that your human eye can see and their RGB color space. It's tiny, very small. And actually, any color that you see on a monitor cannot be produced in CMYK, which kind of sucks since everything we design, we design on screens. Entire industries have evolved to help us solve, solve this dilemma and be able to get more dependent color. So spot color, what is spot color? It can be kind of confusing to new designers, but actually spot color is pretty much really simple. In fact, you've been using spot color for your whole life. If you've used crayons or rubber stamps or fluorescent highlighters or wall paint or maybe nail polish, then you've used spot color. You pick the color that you want and it goes directly on the spot. So unlike mixing together cyan, magenta, yellow, and black to produce color, we literally get the colors that we want and we put them right on the spot. These colors can overlap, but they're solids. They're not like little dots like CMYK. 
We can refer to these colors as spot color, Pantone color, which can kind of be misleading sometimes, and PMS color, which I don't really like, which stands for Pantone Matching System. Spot colors are used when mixing CMYK just will not do. If you want vibrancy, metallics, for example, neons, and fluorescence. There's just no way to mix CMYK to get neon green. It's not gonna happen. When you use spot color, you usually design a one, two, or three color piece because a screen has to be made for every place that the spot color goes. So of course, you have to limit the colors that you use. In order to communicate all this stuff, we use color identity systems and formulas to communicate what we want to say about color. Everybody has different eyesight, everybody sees things a little bit differently, so this ensures the same color across platforms and in print. To communicate RGB, we use hexadecimal codes and we also use RGB values. For CMYK, we use our CMYK formulas to get consistent print color. We can also use formula guides and swatch books like Pantone, probably the most noted brand out there for that, and also TrueMatch. Some color formulas are trademarked, like Barbie Pink, for example, or very well known, Tiffany Blue. It's super important for brands to have consistent color between platforms. So now that you know a little bit more about color, happy designing.